Hey everyone, welcome back to U554. Today we are going to attempt to engage a convoy based off a radio report we received. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen there in the log, um, enemy large convoy, B62 course east-northeast, speed 7 knots. So here we are, this is where the convoy is reported to be, and uh, we will see in this video how useful these radio contact reports can be when you're trying to manually plot a solution. They give you a lot of uh, very useful information. The biggest one is their initial position. If you've got that, um, even if we come across them like eight hours later and they haven't changed course, that makes our job a heck of a lot easier. So we're going to set a rough east-northeast course here, which is about 68 degrees give or take maybe 5 to 10 degrees, but we'll start off by plotting something like that. You know they're going 7 knots, so uh, since it's noon right now, I think we'll attempt to intercept them in about 8 hours, just so we've got hopefully a little bit of darkness by then. So 8 hours at 7 knots is 104 kilometers. Let's get that on here. Oops. All right. So we've definitely got some ground to cover. 160 kilometers in the next eight hours. Oops. So, yeah, we should be able to cover that pretty easily at top speed. And let's just see what the weather's like. It's pretty clear, but choppy. All right. Yeah, I'll update you when we get a little closer, but. Hopefully tonight we'll be seeing what's in this large convoy. Alright, so as you can see it's now sunset. We are uh, pretty close to where we think they'll be. A couple hours ahead of the posse. Um, 1820. So take us down to periscope depth and we will take a listen. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Seerohrtiefe. Auf Tauchstationen. Und das gibt's eine Bewegung. Alle Bewegungen sind klar. So this is our torpedo loadout. This is just from our last patrol. We'd only fired one at that tramp steamer previous. Lee, um, that was quite a while ago. It's now March 5th. Probably a couple more engagements and we'll be heading back to base. We've been at sea over a month now. Um, let's jump on the hydrophones and see if we can't hear these guys. If anything, they'd be on the right side here, so... Oh. Okay. So... Oh. Night lights just came on. Can begin to hear them at about bearing 7-0. To about 48. Well, let's just try to take the center of it. Call it about 55. Okay. Uh, 231. Gonna extend that. Sonerman's not picking them up, so probably over 20 kilometers away. Um, probably pretty close to just the standard east northeast course, which is. 68 degrees, which is what we plotted out previously. Um, 
Let's see. We got that radio report at 11.48. It's now, uh, it's now been nine, eight and a half hours, roughly. So, eight and a half, is that right, eight and a half hours? Yeah, I suppose so. I, uh, I think when I initially plotted this out, um, the, the contact on the map said 12 something, like maybe 12.30. So um, that's why we expected to meet them at 20 today, but uh, I'm realizing the radio contact report doesn't really ma match the map contact report. So, okay, I guess we're not really going to be able to guess or estimate too accurately where they are now. Let's just call it about 26 kilometers. I'm sure that's close enough within a couple of kilometers of error, but um, we'll say their course is pretty close to 70 degrees, and that's what we will set up perpendicular to. So what's that, like 340 that we need to be at, I think? Uh... Oh. Yeah, I don't know what's with me and doing the inverse of the courses I need to make. I did the same thing in the last video, but no, uh, we'll set course for 160, not 340. And uh, yeah, we'll wait till they get a little bit closer, see if we can get visual contact. And hopefully by the time they reach us, it'll be a lot darker. That way there's a lot less risk of them spotting our periscope, and we don't have to worry about Okay, so Anderman hears them, so they're a little bit closer than we thought. Um, yeah, one of the other things about engaging at night is we have two G7As loaded, and those will leave a bubble trail behind them, so best use for night engagements. And I don't have any room to shuffle around torpedoes, so it's not like I could just load all four G7Es if I wanted to. So I'm pretty glad that we're engaging at night. Um, Okay, so target at 5-4. We're still making a turn, so I'm not going to be able to make a line there, but let's just give it a minute till we complete the turn. Alright. Kontakt, Kriegsschiff, kommt näher auf 9-2. Große Entfernung. 92. Well, I think we're right in front of them. I will update you once they get a little bit closer, and we'll uh, see what we can spot. Alright, it's now 7.20 p.m. Um, they should be probably within visual range now. Just taking a quick listen to see where I should be looking. Alright, I'll look at about 90 and start sweeping left. I have a stationary at about 18 meters, but we'll move back up to periscope depth. Just move into silent running here. Okay. Kontakt, Kriegsschiff, entfernt sich auf 5-7. Große Entfernung. Uh, let's see what we can see. Also, I'm going to throw in seven knots to the TDC. That's proven to be accurate, just uh, based on the time that it took them to get from where that initial mark was on our map to where we are now. I mean, they have to be moving seven knots. We know that now. It matches what we saw on the chart. So we, we'll plug that in now, just so that we don't have to touch that again. We can double check once we make visual contact to see um, that the merchants are still moving at 7 knots, but that's, that's where we're going to start. I'm also going to change all these to impact pistols for now. Even tube 5, we might fire the aft tube. Uh, it's not too dark yet. Hopefully by the time they get here, it'll be darker. But this is a good start. Alright, that looks like a stack of one of the destroyers. I don't 
think we'll be able to see any columns yet. Uh, actually, that's a column right there. Very hard to see with these waves. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty big, actually. Okay. Quite a few big ones. Let's look for that lead destroyer. It's either that guy or... Oh, we might be pretty far off. I'll just keep us moving at this point because uh, we're going to have to close a little bit of distance if we want to hit these guys. For sure those G7As will have the range. They've got a range of 12.5 kilometers on the slow setting, but those G7Es are 5 clicks, so yeah, I'm not sure if we'll be able to fire those or not. Might put us into one third just so we can cover a little more distance here. And uh, we'll pop the periscope back up in about 20 minutes, and then we'll slow down. So, I'll update you when we get a little closer. Alright, so that lead destroyer, relative to us, is now at 350 degrees. This is probably going to be our best chance to estimate the range on that lead destroyer. If he's even close enough that our periscope can pick him up. You can't do a range check if the game doesn't pick up the ship. It's now very dark, so that could affect our ability. Alright, it's showing up as Frigate, so I'm going to go ahead and ID this guy as a Black Swan class. Now, since it's the lead destroyer, he's... I mean, he is going to be zigzagging around, but um, typically they're right in front of the center of the convoy. So that'll give us a good point to base our our maneuvers off of. Okay, Black Swan, there he is. Now this range check doesn't really have to be exact. It has to be close though. 4500 meters, that looks about right to me. So 4500 at bearing 3, 4, 5. Let's plot that out. 3, 4, 5. So we have to extend the line at about 145 degrees to 4,500 meters. Okay, and it's right on track with uh, our line that we've got. So I'm, I'm not going to change this course line of the convoy. It looks like it's close enough, like I say, that um, that black swan in front is going to be zigzagging back and forth. So I'm sure he does cross this line at some point. For our purposes, that will be close enough. And we will set, we'll make double check, make sure that we're on a 90 degree course with their course. So 160, we are still there. Sometimes in rough weather, especially if you're stationary, your sub will kind of turn with the winds. So always good to double check your course in those last minutes before engagement. We're still a ways away from engagement, but it uh, doesn't hurt to adjust course. And we will update the TDC here, so looking straight ahead at bearing zero, we are to the port side of the convoy's course, 90 degrees, so we're going to set the AOB to 90 degrees to port. Alright, that looks good. Let's see what else we can identify in this convoy. It's a large cargo way back there. That might be a good target for our G7As. Uh, what is that? Well, that looks like a tanker. It's just partially obstructed by this smaller freighter wait for him to get out of the way, but I think that's maybe a, a large tanker back there. We'll definitely go for that guy. What else can we see? That's a large cargo. Granville type freighter. A lot of good targets. 
don't like to reload after I've fired when I'm engaging a convoy. They, if they're close and they're listening for you, they will hear you reloading torpedoes. So it's not like I'm gonna fire, reload, and fire again. Basically, I just have to make these four shots count. Might fire the aft tube if anything ends up behind us, but I don't think we're gonna be close enough to fire tube five. Maybe if this Corvette gets behind us, we might uh, try to sink him, but that's a pretty low percentage shot. So Corvette's got a 5.4 meter draft. We could probably get him with magnetic pistols, but we'll see how close he gets. We'll keep that in, the, in our back pocket, this info on the flower class. But in the meantime, might as well start uh, finding out where some of these ships are and identifying them. So I'd like to hit maybe that Granville. Um, you can pretty reliably sink a Granville in one shot and it's like 4,500 tons. So that's pretty good efficiency. Uh, large cargo is a good target too, but they can be a lot harder to sink. Okay, that's I'd say that's a modern tanker. It's got that tall front mast. Yeah, definitely a modern tanker. That's a lot of tonnage. So definitely want to go for that. I can't do a range check on the tanker yet because it's not showing up on our periscope, but I can range check that coastal freighter. So let's see how far away he is. coastal freighter and oh, I don't know about that I'd say close to four kilometers at 37 degrees so 198 Probably somewhere about there is that coastal freighter. So, if he's following the same course, uh, 70 degrees. Coastal freighter is going to be going about there, and uh, that modern tanker might be right in the center of the convoy. Usually the columns are spaced out anywhere between 500 meters to one kilometer apart. So that actually looks quite right. I think this this main line that we drew follows the center column pretty well. And I think that's the column that our modern tanker is in. So uh, if we wait for him to get to about, I mean, this is gonna be our primary target. We wanna make absolutely sure we hit him and anything else is just kind of a bonus. So we're gonna set up for about 20 degrees when that modern tanker crosses the 20 degree crosshair that's when we'll fire so we can kind of guess how far that's going to be i mean we're moving so this will change but for now if he was already at 20 degrees bearing he'd be about four kilometers away so i'm going to set our range to about 3,500 meters, just because we're always going to be getting closer and we won't be firing the torpedoes for quite a while yet. But that'll give us a time to work with. On the slow setting, it'll take 3 minutes 41 seconds to cover, well, a 3.5 kilometer distance. So we'll keep that in mind when we're trying to set up our other shots here. So no radar to worry about yet. That's why I'm able to keep this periscope up. I don't think anyone's going to spot us. Maybe this Corvette, if he keeps getting closer, which he will. I should actually ID this guy just so I can range check him. If he gets any closer than about a mile, I will put my periscope down. Corvette. There you are. tall mast. He's about a mile away right now actually, okay. It's closer than I thought, so he's at 
about 99 degrees. Oh yeah. Well, I don't think Corvettes have active sonar. I could be wrong. Like at this stage in the war, early 1941, I don't know. Maybe they do. But I'm hoping we don't get pinged as he crosses over us and blows our cover. That would not be good. He is getting rather close. Okay. Anything else we want to fire at? Okay, so we will hit this guy. Oh, we can ID him now. Let me just drop the periscope for now. I don't want to be keeping it too high for too long just because of how close that Corvette's getting. I think we will observe our torpedoes hit instead of playing it safe and diving right away just to show the audience what ends up happening here. I don't know if the attack will be a success or not, but moving this slow in these conditions we should be able to sink at least a couple ships, I would hope. Okay, modern tanker. How far are you? I think we basically know he's on that center column already. Saying four kilometers at 32 degrees. Yeah, that sounds right. Four kilometers at 32 degrees. Alright, so maybe they are only spaced uh, less than a kilometer apart, these columns. So, when we do our range, we will go a little bit closer to us than this line, so... Yeah, I'll update that in a minute. I do want to have a look at what else we think we're going to be firing at here. Plot out those lines. Okay. So that's a Granville, I think we will shoot at that, and I think we'll also shoot at that large cargo right there. So I'm thinking two torpedoes for the modern tanker. Those will be our G7As, and the G7Es will fire one at this Granville, and one... Jeez, there's not a very good chance we sink that guy with one G7E, but maybe if we hit him in the screws, that's... Pretty tough shot to make, though. I should really be keeping an eye on that Corvette. He's going to be right on top of us right away here. Wouldn't be surprised if we could hear him any second now. With the naked ear. Okay, Granville. Let's ID this guy. Done. Just take a quick look over my shoulder. Okay, there's the Corvette. Very close, less than a kilometer now. Away. Okay, and there's our large cargo. This is the Granville. They might be in the same column. Seventeen hundred meters ish. That Granville is definitely the closest, closest ship, 1700 meters at 30 degrees, so we'll put a line on the map for him. He's about right there. Again, course of the convoy, 70 degrees. So we'll make a line for him. Alright, so this line here is where that Granville is going. This line back here, roughly, probably a little bit closer, is where that modern tanker is. Then we got to figure out where um, 
where that large cargo is. Let's just take a listen behind us. Oh yeah. Right at 140 is that Corvette. We could probably take a pretty easy kill shot at him right now, but not worth it. I think we can probably evade him pretty easily. Do a little speed check on him maybe. wrong. That is a stubby little boat. Fifteen seconds. Looks like she's going eight knots. Well, I'm not hearing any pings, so that's a good sign. Six hundred meters away. Yeah, that's kind of scary. Very scary. Oh, and this guy's gonna be obstructing our shots. Okay, this, uh, basically ready to fire at the modern tanker here. I think we may have to let this guy get past first, though. Alright, so we're going to be firing a salvo at that modern tanker, tubes 2 and 3. We're going to be using the fast setting, impact pistol, and I think we'll adjust our depth to about, oh, I don't know, 5.5 meters. Those bigger tankers have a pretty deep draft. And the spread angle will be pretty close. So if we're going to be firing when he's at about 10 degrees, what does that give us for range? About 3 kilometers. So on the fast setting, it'll take 2 minutes for our torpedoes to get there, which means we can probably fire those G7Es, which travel at the slow setting, immediately after. Uh, let me just... It's probably a good spread right there. We will open tubes two and three. All right, this guy's still blocking my shot. Hopefully not for much longer. Uh, behind us, Corvette is moving on. Goodness. This guy's really asking for it. It's gonna be our second target right there. You know, I might just fire two at it to ensure that we actually sink it instead of going one at the ground bill and one at the large cargo. We'll see. Okay, there's our modern tanker. quite at 10 degrees yet, but since we're getting closer, that 3 kilometer range estimate's probably pretty accurate. I think we'll fire right now. Check back on you in 2 minutes now. Open tube 1. Where's that Granville? Alright, well, 
tube four is gonna be the last to arrive. Those three torpedoes should hit roughly the same time, but if we fire at this guy, I think he's gonna already be evading, so I'll fire right at the funnel. And now we wait. I suppose one thing I could do is prepare my aft tube on a magnetic detonator just in case that flower class comes close. So he's got a draft of 5.4. We'll set the depth to just over 6 meters on magnetic influence fast setting. And if we have to, we can fire tube 5 at him when he inevitably comes back to look for us. 30 seconds to impact. So let's find that modern tanker. That should be the first torpedo hit, although we might hit the ground bill first. There's the modern tanker. This guy's going to block our view. Yeah, it was clearly a little further out than we thought. A lot further out if the torpedoes still haven't hit. Okay, uh, we just hit the ground bill, it sounds like. Yep. Oh. There's a hit and a second hit, so yeah. That uh, modern tanker was quite a bit further out than we thought. And I guess we'll periscope down since the star shells are coming out, but I'll have a quick listen on that fourth torpedo. I can still hear it moving toward that large merchant. I really don't have high hopes for this fourth torpedo. Could be a while yet before it hits. Maybe another 30 seconds, and they're already going to start be starting to uh, take evasive action. Well, it's traveling at about three degrees, so let's just have a look before we go down. Oh, hello, searchlight. Maybe we'll keep the periscope down. Oh, it's a hit. Ooh, that sounds like a critical hit. Of course, we've got a guy right in front of us blocking our view, but yeah, that, that uh, large cargo that we hit went down instantly. Hit something pretty explosive on board, so 8,500 tons. Not bad. I didn't think we'd get her with one torpedo. I do kind of want to have a look at that before we dive deep. Oh, yeah. Yep, uh, something went terribly wrong there. The whole deck is on fire. Yikes. As if this guy can't spot our periscope, he's like 500 meters away. Anyway, I'm assuming that modern tanker will go down, it's been hit twice, and the Granville has been hit once, usually that's all it takes for a Granville. Um, but I'm gonna run silent, run deep, try to not get detected, and I will update you as the situation develops. I don't know what that explosion was. Alright, so the modern tanker did go down just a couple minutes later. I heard quite a few explosions. They're actually still going on out there. Yep. Oh, and there's the ground bell. Okay, so that's three for three. Not a bad day. Just gonna make sure we can get out of here undetected now. 
We've adjusted our course to 230 degrees and we're diving down to about 160 meters. So yeah, we will see how that goes. Alright, we're below 100 meters now. I did just have a warship pass right behind us. We could hear it just in in the boat, like not even listening on the hydrophones. It passed right above us. It's that one at about 170, so I don't know if she's circling or what, but I don't hear any pings, which is a good sign. And as long as she just passed right by, we might be okay. We engaged from back here. So we've already covered about a kilometer and we are basically going to be heading in the opposite direction that the convoy is and slipping away uh, a little bit deeper. Alright, it's been almost an hour since first torpedo impacts and we appear to have slipped away at 160 meters. I'm going to take us out of silent running. And uh, as soon as we lose hydrophone contact with this convoy, we will reload our torpedoes, uh, surface, recharge the batteries, well, they're basically full already, but um, I don't think we'll re-engage this convoy. They might be a little more aware now, and they're heading into shallow waters, so if we engage them the next night, they'll be, they'll be in much shallower waters, and I just don't want to take that risk. So I think we'll break contact and uh, probably spend another week or two at sea before returning to Saint-Nazaire. <laughs>